Good evening. Bless their Bible lifted in the air. Woo. My name is Christian, which is ironic because I was born into sin. My father was never around. He was a deadbeat. My mother did all of the sins. She heroined. She cocained. Gay. This was all that I knew. And I said, church, that's for loser sissy pants with cooties. I'm cool and do the basketball. The only Jesus I knew was our mutual friend, Jesus, who incidentally was Catholic. So he probably should have come with us too. <laughs> they were going to blow something up as a metaphor for the rapture. And I was into that stuff. They said, listen, come down to Minnesota Springs Third Baptist Church. Scared straight didn't work on me. Dare didn't work on me. You know what worked on me? Jesus. The explosion went off early, burning the church down around me. And as the fourth degree burn seared my skin, I had a near-death experience and saw God. And he said, don't do gay heroin, do Jesus. From that day on, I was a changed man. I stopped being disrespectful towards women in this worldly way and started being disrespectful toward women in a God-honoring way. I used to see women as only a sexy body I could use for my advantage. Yeah, <laughs> that's wrong. Now I see women as a sexy body that's going to lead me to, into temptation and ruin my life, as the Lord intended. Girls can't go to seminary, but it's not because they're lesser than men. It's just men's job to be the closest with Jesus out loud. Girls can be just as close with Jesus quietly by themselves. I wasn't sure if I should go to seminary, so I opened up my Bible to a random page and it said, No. And that's how I knew the devil was testing me to see if I would think that the Bible was God's word every time you flipped it open, which it is not. It is God's word, but you can't always think like that because that's fortune telling thinking and that's bad. And so because the Bible said no, that's how I knew that God wanted yes. And I learned that the world around us is the actual sissy loser pant cootie face. Because they're doing abortion, bisexuality, skirts on dudes. Christian, but I actually even have a tattoo of John 316 on my arm the long ways. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and no one else because they don't exist. Can we just all close our eyes? Yeah, close your eyes for me. And now I want you to imagine everyone you've ever loved. Now imagine them all burning in a lake of eternal lava. Have you ever considered that everyone around you needs you to fix them? You're going to walk into school and people are going to say, What? You're a Jesus freak now? I used to go back behind the school with whatever girl would hang off my arm for the week and smoke cigarettes. But after Jesus, I don't need tobacco and I don't need that back hoe. I have the Lord. As a child, I actually went to church all the time, but it was Catholic church, which doesn't count. Just lost in the devil's Christianity. You can tell how much this world hates Jesus. Because when you go door to door telling people that they're sinners bound for hell, they shut the door in your face. They slam the door in Jesus' face. Now, sex is great. I do it with my wife. You don't need weed. You need to believe. I'm going to ask the music director to come up behind me and start playing softly on the piano in case you weren't really gutted enough. Can you do something in a minor key? Maybe you're depressed. Jesus will fix that. Maybe you're unloved. Jesus will fix that. Maybe you're gay. Jesus will fix that. 
And if this is a Pentecostal church camp, then if you're disabled, Jesus will also fix that. But if we're Baptist, we're not going to go that far. Say it with me. Jesus is stronger than shrooms. Jesus is stronger than shrooms. We don't need drugs. If you like live music and you're listening to our worship band and feeling something, that's Jesus. If you listen to Katy Perry and feel something, then that's actually the devil. I know you haven't slept in 21 hours and your parents are a long ways away and you can't contact them because we don't have cell service and there are bears, incidentally. But any stress that you're feeling is actually God telling you you're gonna burn. Can we get wild? Can we get wild for a second? I'd like everyone to reach out and physically touch the stranger sitting next to them, but in a Jesus way. And start praying for them loudly, out loud, with noise. Some of you may need to come to God tonight. Some of you may need to rededicate your lives because you haven't been as serious as I would like you to be. Don't tell me you can't have a social life without beer. All these churches have pizza nights where they get dominoes and talk about abortion. Some of you may need to dedicate your life to the ministry. This exciting feeling you're feeling right now after eating a solid pound of nachos and drinking pixie sticks in Dr. Pepper is actually the Holy Spirit, and he's telling you you need to do what I'm doing right now for the rest of your life. Don't make that promise lightly because God will smite you if you if you don't go through with it, but it, that is probably what he's telling you, so just so you know. There is freedom in Christ. We don't expect you to be like those other churches. You can even raise your arms. You feel in Jesus? Amen. All right. Ah, oh, I went a little over time. It's midnight 30.